Well, the AFL yesterday finalised the terms of engagement for season 2024. They informed the 18 clubs of a series of alterations from the field to the interchange bench and to the tribunal after consulting them last year. And those changes were this week rubber stamped by the commission. And it's a great pleasure to have the AFL's Executive General Manager of Football, Laura Kane, with us this morning. Laura, thanks a lot and welcome to SEN. Thank you. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you. It's, it's, I know it's been spoken about a lot, but the so-called uh, Maynard rule, if you like, regarding the attempted smothers, uh, the latest in a line of perhaps, what is it, 30 alterations now designed to make the game safer, of course, which I think we all understand, and, and the class action's ongoing and the increasing awareness around concussion. Uh, do you accept at all that you will only be able to make the game safer to a point, that there will be an inevitable line reached here, Laura, where the risks taken by the players are you know, inherent? The games continue to evolve, so I think we've we've been making changes over the past couple of years, 30, as you mentioned, in terms of ongoing change, and the game, I think the footy's gotten better. So the football has been able to evolve and develop, and it's as spectacular as we've seen it, all at the same time. So that part, you know, fills us with confidence in terms of the direction that we're going, and like we said yesterday and have said all along, we're not... Um, we're not shying away from that, that we need to make the game safe and we need to continue to improve the quality, and I think we can do both. Just while we're on the subject of concussion, I think you might have even touched on this yesterday, but we were discussing it, Kane and I, yesterday, I guess the suggestion that players could sign you know, waivers to avoid future litigation, maybe protect the fabric of the game, as a number of texters are, are putting it this morning. Why hasn't... Can you educate us here? No one is a lawyer in here, by any stretch of the imagination, but is that something that can be done, can't be done? Where, where does that all sit, that whole suggestion? I haven't been a lawyer for a long time either, so I'm well and truly in um, footy now. But uh, I mean, the the approach that we take is by way of our medical experts. So, uh, you know, as you guys know, coaching, high performance, medical staff, we have some of the best people in the world working at our clubs and we have six medical experts working at the AFL on this very topic. So we know that they're meticulous with how they plan training. We know that they want to protect the players. They want the players, you know, they being clubs, want the players out there more than we do mm. uh, for their fans and to win games of footy. So in terms of the, the care that we know is provided for our players at Clubland, we feel really good about that. We want people to feel safe playing our game. So I won't talk to waivers or the legal overlay of this. Our focus is on the rules, the on-field product, and then the processes. What happens? What does the return to play look like? And we we feel confident that the process that we have in place Uh, one is well placed with the current research, but also is evolving and listening and taking on all of the feedback. Some would say I'm an alarmist, Laura, but I'm concerned that the (laughs) knee to the head may become a real issue. And by extension, that means that the high mark would be in danger. Has that come up in any of your conversations about safety for players? I, I also think sometimes you might be an alarmist too. So good observation, <laughs> but no, I, I, I we look at all instances. So there's so many contact. It's a contact spot. There's so many instances around the grounds and moments that happen that can be of risk. But so many on so many occasions they're not of risk, and they're what the, that makes the game great and spectacular. And they're the moments we all remember. I mean, we we award mark of the year. Like we want to celebrate those individual moments but we have to make sure that they're safe. So we think that players can continue to contest the ball, particularly in a pack mark setting Mm. and not necessarily hurt each other. Accidents happen on a footy field and we know that. We understand that in the context of a game, things will happen and people will unfortunately get hurt. So what we're trying to reduce is the instances that we can control. And so if it's how you bring that player down to ground or how you tackle that last motion or that second motion, that's what we're focused on at the moment. Mm. But but right now a player can run back with the flight of the ball and legally his opponent can drive his knee into the jaw of that player who can't see what's coming in, in the guise of contesting a mark or a spoil and that's still legal. Now some of the highlights we've had in the game used to be the big bumps and the big tackles. That is now gone. Uh, my concern would be that at some stage legally or through the safety and care of the players, you're going to have to make a call on this or, or not? I mean, play, you know, players go out there to contest the ball and win games of footy. They don't go out there to hurt each other. We'll continue to look at it, but we've made so many changes to different aspects of the game 
the different ways players interact with each other on field and the footy's gotten better. Mm. So what I feel good about is if we had to evolve to a place that makes the game safer in another aspect of the game, we most certainly will. But we know that players adapt. And I think that we can have players running back with the the, the flight of the ball and to take a mark and, you know, those moments that make the game so special. I think we can still see those uh, without players getting hurt. So I I feel good about where it's going. We're speaking to the Executive General Manager of Footy at the AFL, Laura Kane. Laura, the changes that are made are there and everyone would have seen them by now. Just some of the others that, uh, look, the 666 warning is remaining. I mean, uh, my question is why? Uh, How much time was given, if any, um, to, to potentially removing it, given it's been in place for so long? We're looking at it. It uh, adds a little bit of a delay to the game, which we don't want to see, but we felt that we will go with it for another year and just monitor how many times it happens. But that's most definitely on our radar for something that we think clubs have adapted to. Mm. Is last possession out of bounds on your radar as well? Uh, Laura, it's getting pretty strict, the interpretation of insufficient intent. What's your discussions around that been? Yeah, we've been looking. I mean, we've got the AFLW competition um, that gives us a good marker, but we also look at the Sandfall mm. Waffle um, and different changes that they make, whether it be around, you know, um, last touch or the bounce, you know, any aspect of the game that they alter and looking at what that does to the on-field product. So we'll continue to look at it, but no no, um, uh, you know, intention to change it in the AFL competition at the moment. The bounce is obviously safe for the foreseeable future? It is. And the your off season, if there is such a thing, score review fact finding, where and who, and the the review system, where's that at in terms of ball chip technology? I mean, could we see it in the VFL this year? And and I ask for the officiating overlay, of course. I know there's all sorts of footy data possible with it as well. We've had a really good look around the world. I had a look at what they're using, both on their equivalent um, in different sports in goal line technology, and then around the ground. I think the unique part around our uh, field uh, is the curved nature of the line. Mm. So technology doesn't um, love that as much as it loves the straight line, but mm. we're focused on the goal line technology and what that could look like. So ball tracking is going really well. We had a trial at Marvel just last week and we've started at another venue, a smaller venue, just to see how it interacts um, without all the concrete and without the all the seats and both have worked tremendously well. So Anything is possible. Uh, we've had it in AFL preseason men's training over the past couple of months. So clubs have all been using them mixed in with their normal Sharons. And we'll have a look at whether State League or uh, AFLW, VFLW is the best way to go in terms of introducing that technology. Can you explain how it would work? Like, is it the, the umpire getting a notification in their ear because something's, you know, you've been notified that the ball's hit the post? Or, did, yeah, I'm struggling to picture how it could work. Yeah, so the, the ball has a chip in it that picks up a whole heap of different data points and different information. So uh, there's there's a stream around the game itself. So it's tracking things like congestion and ball speed. So we don't have direct metrics for either of those two things. Mm. And how can we start to understand where the ball's going, how quickly it's going and where the players are relative to the footy. So there's a football performance game analysis stream to it. In terms of score review, most of it uh, centres around what, it tu- what the ball touches and also what lines it crosses. And so it's Quite, um, it's quite good in terms of uh, tracking when the ball has crossed the line and if anything has happened to the ball when that ball has crossed the line, say a, um, a, a flat finger or a post mm. brush, uh, it can pick that up. So, yes, the idea is that the technology um, is instant and I saw it in action the other day uh, and tells our officials what has happened. So we just need to work out how much testing we need to do to make sure that we're confident to use that technology in officiating. But uh, we've already started using it in in terms of uh, data collection from a game analysis perspective. Uh, Laura, the competitive balance review that your team is embarking upon, you know, big project, of course, 18 teams, 24 rounds, nine teams in in one city, obviously has a lot of elements to it. Uh, the, The more contentious, you know, going back to last draft was the NGA, and the Northern Academy systems, you know, Gold Coast all over the headlines, of course, for their, their four first rounders via the Academy and the 20% discount when it comes to matching them. Is that in any danger of being changed? Absolutely. We look at all of those mechanisms of player movement and 
I don't think any danger of being changed necessarily is the best conclusion. It is it should be evolved and it should move with the times. And if we want the game to look like the community and reflect the community, then we have to do that. The competitive balance review process has been just terrific. Our clubs have been extraordinary in the contribution that they've made. I've um, seen all the emails come through last week and they're very long. So there's a lot of thoughtful information that we will contemplate and make sure that the player movement mechanisms all work together and they help our clubs build lists and programs that reflect the diverse nature of our community. So that is really important to me. You know, is really important to our clubs. And just with the NGA, obviously it's a 40-pick window where clubs can't match bids. I know there were some clubs upset about that. Could that be adjusted in the, in the near future? We're looking at that with the Next Generation Academy. It, it uh, was previously introduced, as you both would know well, um, without that cap on it. And we're looking at what it would look like if we went back to uh, an ability for clubs to pick in the higher um, rounds of the draft. Uh, I know we're nearly out of time, and apologies have been a bit of a hot potato as far as the topics are concerned. Mid-season trade period, definitely next year, would you say? We're looking at it. We're really open to it. I like the idea of it. I think it can play an important role in player movement generally, and I think the fans will love it. So I think it will create a lot of attention, uh, but it has to be right, and it has to work for the clubs. And as you said just before, it has to work in with things like Next Gen and mm. Northern Academies and any other bidding system that we have to make sure that we're not inadvertently creating um, more grief for our clubs in terms of their list builds. And if someone does wolf whistle during a game this year, what, what happens to them? <laughs> they won't be wolf whistling. They'll be following the rules, so we won't have to worry about that. I really appreciate you being so generous with your time, Laura. Um, you've had a big few days, of course. They're all big, we know that. But uh, great to have you on, and, and thanks for donating your time with us this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks for having Thank me. You. There you go. Laura Kane there, the executive GM of footy at the AFL, Kane.